had to get a three for my four thirty. And then today I started at seven. Tomorrow I start at six We'll be in Daniel twelve if you want to open your Bibles and get there. Uh-oh. Then finish it up, right? Yeah. Yep, it's gonna finish it up. Testing, testing. All right. I went live already. I shouldn't have done that. Any prayer requests before we go to prayer? What's that? My manager cat got run over. And she's heartbroken. Her name is Stephanie. Your manager's cat? Did it, did it killed it? Yes. It was chasing a squirrel across the street. Mm. And person got the cat and the squirrel. <coughs> he thinks he was going pretty fast. All right, real quick, anybody else? We're running a little slow. Driver, you know, it <laughs> yeah, Jenny? I can't hear you, but... Keep, keep going with the hours oh, yeah. Now. So far, Michelle hasn't told me that I have to get the get back in. So, Amen. Uh, the other lady came in and she didn't say anything to me the other day. So, Anybody I'll else? Doug? Hey, I'm sick. She's uh, got the flu bug or something. I'm not sure what's wrong with her. Yeah, uh, Jenny's, one of Jenny's coworkers has strep throat. <coughs> yeah, Pam's got it. Where she's, I think it's all up here and mm. just draining. Mark? Yeah. I get the stupid truck figured out. At least I'm able to drop, and I'm grateful for that. Jim? Our grandson Logan has struck Oh, wow. And Ken's Aunt Karen has started her radiation treatments. Who? Aunt Karen. Oh. Radiation? How old is she? Yeah, struck through 17 pounds on the screen. <clears throat> Charlie? Yeah. Hope you don't get the. Oh, yeah, I don't have that ready. Johnny, you taking care of that? Sorry. Should have mentioned that to you. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and go. Sue? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time tonight, a real good time fellowship that we've had. And uh, we just thank you for uh, the blessing of being able to have this good food. Okay. And, uh, this nice building with good air conditioning. And uh, the best part of it is the people. And we just thank you for the family that we have here. Talk a little bit Sunday about the blessing that it is, and also know there's many people that we we know personally who do not have a good local church. And uh, one of the privileges we have is to lift each other up in prayer, and we uh, do not just each other but others, as Jill mentioned, her manager Stephanie is grieving over the death of her cat being run over like that. It's just a terrible thing. We just pray your comfort for her and I know you used Jill there as a witness Amen. and a comfort and encouragement. We thank you for that. For Janie, uh, that she'll continue to have these work hours and she's uh, 
been blessed with, and that you'll help her in her work situation. And uh, we pray for Pam uh, with the illness that she has, and then Logan and uh, Jenny's uh, co-worker, Todd. Terry. Terry. With strep throat. And we do want to lift up uh, all the kids in school and Olivia and the kids she watches and little Gloria and all the kids we have here, Joseph and Dre and Nick. Uh, we just pray that uh, they'll be able to stay well as stuff gets passed around. Uh, we pray for Mark in his truck situation. And you'll help him there. And uh, he's losing a little business and that doesn't help either, so we just pray you help him through that. Uh, we pray for uh, Jim's Aunt Karen, who's having radiation. And, uh, it really is flippant of us to pray for a lot of these things and, and not really think about the devastating effects that this has on a person. May we really have a heartfelt concern for her and others who go through this stuff. Lord, we just Amen. our hearts go out to them and we know yours does as well. You didn't bring this on humanity. Man has brought it on himself. Sin brought death and death has passed upon all men. And it's a battle staying well. <coughs> and we just pray you help Karen through these uh, treatments. And uh, Sue uh, Mary Lynn's friend also battling cancer. Just one of the things you hate to hear anybody uh, go through. When it comes to the flesh, it's about as bad as it gets. The only thing worse is when we hear someone has died without the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jenny's mom, Marilyn, we lift her up to you, Lord. She has a lot of health issues, but she's been blessed with a lot of good years, and especially the last. 10 years or so, Jenny been able to spend so much more time with her mom. It's been a great blessing. We thank you for that. And uh, all of this reminds us we'd love to go up in the rapture, Lord. Amen. <laughs> we ask you to come quickly. In the meantime, we also have onliners uh, with uh, requests, and we don't want to fail to lift them up. Brother Mark and his mother-in-law, he's trying to be a help to her, and she's got surgery upcoming. Uh, his family has a lot of things going on. We just pray for him. We pray for Brother John Hartman, uh, who asks for uh, help in his personal walk with the Lord. Amen. Uh, Charmaine mentioned lost loved ones. All of us have lost loved ones that we've witnessed to or we've prayed for, in some cases, for many years. And they just continue to be stiff-necked and stubborn. Lord, we lift each one up to you. And uh, Charmaine also asked me to pray that Morgan can find a good Christian friend at the school he's at. Very important. Amen. <coughs> you, Jolanda Webb, uh, she just wants to be uh, forgiving and ask that you'd help her to be softened uh, toward those that she needs to forgive. And uh, there's a lot of that even in this room that we have to pray about. Faith's grandson Isaac's taking a school trip. We pray for his safety and all those kids and the administrators, teachers. Uh, Brother Jonathan Watson's dad recovering from hernia surgery. And uh, we pray for him. And I'm also thankful that uh, Jonathan's little buddy Whiskers is uh, doing well. And we just pray for him to be able to take care of him. And uh, also, Jonathan smashed a toenail. And uh, he needs to have that taken care of, and that can be painful. We just pray, Lord, you help him with that. Um, and uh, we want to lift up our missionary family in the Ukraine, uh, Brother Bardwell and his family, building that rehab house <coughs> while also carrying on an English club. Um, Kostya is an atheist lady that they've talked to, and she seems very interested. We pray you would soften her heart, Lord, and convict her. Amen. Love to hear about her being saved. Um, we pray for the bum ministry that he has there and all the people who are just 
uh, living on the street, homeless, alcoholics, drug users, and they do a wonderful job getting the uh, gospel to them. We pray for uh, Yura and Pablo, their salvation. And uh, we pray for Benaiah's health and uh, also Micaiah who needs to go to the dentist that you open the door there, provide there. And Alexi, who was saved last year, that uh, you open up opportunities for growth and opportunities for ministry. And we don't want to fail to mention the Russian buildup of the war over there. And there's returning soldiers from the front, and our news media does a horrible job of covering that. They don't really know <coughs> the truth about what's going on. And uh, we put that in your hands, Lord, because we don't know a lot about it because of the uh, bad news media we have here. And uh, speaking of that, they spend all their time uh, obsessed with their hatred for our president. And we lift him up to you, Lord, and ask that you keep him safe, guide him, give him wisdom, help him to throw aside this temptation to push for a two-state solution in Israel. Amen. And uh, protect him from the wicked. Thank you, Lord, for all the things he's done as uh, president, the things that the Congress and Senate have been able to do, the judges, the hundreds of judges being placed on the federal bench that are constitutionalists and will uh, deal justly uh, from the bench. And we do pray for Brett Kavanaugh and his wife and family who have been attacked by the very wicked left wing in this country. Amen. Uh, and, uh, we just pray you come through for us there, Lord, but we do ask your will to be done. You know what's best. But uh, I thought I would say this, but uh, thank you for Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham mm -hmm. and the way they're taking a stand on this. Pretty amazing. And I credit you. And so we just thank you for all these things, Lord. The upcoming elections in uh, November 6th, we have a lot of important things to vote on. Governor, Senator, local uh, district congressmen and uh, other things. And Lord, give us wisdom, help each one to do what's right, beginning with the fact that everybody who can needs to vote. And those who don't, put them under conviction. I think they still have a few more days. October 9th, I think, is the deadline to register. We need godly, especially godly Christian people voting. All these things we lift up to you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to not do too bad. I've gotten started later than this and gotten through before 10 o'clock. Hey, <laughs> I give you until noon. Tomorrow. You mean 10 tomorrow? <laughs> 10 tomorrow. Hey. John would be like that fellow who fell asleep on the Apostle Paul. He'll fall out the window. <laughs> yeah, but I'll grab your back. <laughs> Real quick, we'll go through these. Sunday, Brother Stephen's going to fire up the grill after church. So come Amen. ready Sunday. Brother John will be teaching next Wednesday. Amen. Right. Um, I'm not staying home um, to avoid coming to church or anything, but Jenny and I are uh, going to have uh, Brian, Stephen, and Gloria are going to be out in the hills of Tennessee. So Amen. I probably should have put that on the internet, but if you go out to our house, there's a killer dog waiting for you. <laughs> Um, the 19th, mark it down, movie night. 27th, mark it down, we're going to party. <laughs> Work party. Saturday, 9.30, there is no book I can't. <laughs> uh, Wednesday, the, October 31st is Halloween night. Of course, we're too spiritual for that. But Brother Johnny is going to come as Ronald McDonald. Woohoo! I'm loving it. Now, yes. yeah, I don't know about you. If you want to dress up or something, you go right ahead. I'll be wearing Buckeye gear. Ooh. Amen. <laughs> and then uh, we'll have our, I didn't put the right dates so we'll later. <laughs> Reminder, 10 a.m. Sundays, open Bible study. Brother John, you teaching this week? Lord willing. All right. Amen. Lord willing and the church don't rise. Amen. The church rises and you find something else. <laughs> Can you take the microphone and play the picture? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, could you try to reminder to silence your cell phones very quickly before we get in our study?
you try the other one as well? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't try this one. Tsunami, and I heard on the way in there's a volcano go off. Did you hear that too? Because I wasn't sure if I heard it right. Not sure if I heard about the volcano, but. So uh, pray for Indonesia. The death toll's up over 1,234. And I want to do something. Um, wow. I'm going to show you this. Some of you aren't on uh, the internet. Let me see if I can get there real quick. We have a video, pretty amazing. I just want to show you, it's only a minute or something like that. But now my, is my internet not gonna work? Let's close that, close a couple more windows. Is that the one on the church family? Excuse me? Is that the church family? Church family? No, it's not, I think it's not different. Okay. No, it's a tsunami. Here it is.
hanging from the volcano. I don't it know. Like volcano. I think that's what it was. It probably yeah. 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 I mean, it's, so. The death toll tonight before we left was over 1,400. That's and there's still like 1,000 people. Just they think that it could be up to 5,000 people. Now, I want to, just another two-minute video here. I want to dispel the myth. Days, it's the dramatic increase of earthquakes around the world, something that in geological time would be statistically unprecedented if it were actually happening during what many believe is the last generation. That in the last days, there'd be an, an increase in great earthquakes. Jesus used verbiage that means bigger earthquakes in unusual places. We're looking at things regarding, for example, greater hurricanes, greater typhoons, um, things that in nature, you can sense that things are coming undone. And yet, if you looked at it naturally, you would say, well, this is due to global warming, or this is due to, to man's bad stewardship of the earth. But yet the Bible said, as we approached the end, this is exactly what we would see. Which, by the way, that preempts man's involvement. The scriptures do tell us that earthquakes, specifically earthquakes, will increase in frequency and in intensity. But wait a minute. Hasn't the U.S. Geological Survey, or USGS, gone on record to state that this is not occurring, that no such increase in earthquakes have been detected around the world? Because this is such a debated topic, the USGS gave a press release saying that this was not occurring. As a result, we actually decided to take the USGS data, millions of data points, spent months downloading it, analyzing it, graphing it, studying it, the results were absolutely terrifying. Despite what you may have heard in the past, this is the compiled data from the USGS from the last 100 years. Keep in mind that we're not talking about the millions of micro tremors that can now be detected, that could be easily detected by early 19th century sensors from virtually anywhere in the world. This data shows what the USGS and other organizations do not want you to see. It shows that the earthquakes are increasing in intensity and they are increasing in frequency. This is exactly the description that was prophesied. We have that video if it's not checked out. I don't agree with everything on the video, but it's a good source. And what it's amazing, there's just so many uh, teachers out there these days who want to uh, deny what we're seeing in front of our faces. And uh, well, just to lighten things up a little bit, <clears throat> we also have a fake news media in this country, uh, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, etc. Other than Fox, OAN, and CRTV, which are small, much smaller, the rest of these networks are Democrats. That's all. Yep. They're registered Democrats, and they are propagandists for the Democrat Party. Now, they also like rhinos. So you also see them once in a while talking nice about people like John McCain before he died. And when he died, they turned him into a little god. Yeah. But that's because they're rhinos, they're Republicans in name only. They're not really conservatives. But the news media in this country is the enemy of the Constitution, Amen. which that's why the, the president called them the enemy of the people, because they hate our Constitution. They right. want to overthrow and overturn the Constitution, establish a new world order, and a uh, socialist state. Yeah. And once in a while, they get mad at each other. And here's left-winger Ted Koppel, um, who's very pro-socialist and left-wing, uh, with CNN's Brian Stelter. And uh, Brian Stelter uh, w was interviewing him on a panel, and uh, Koppel told him that CNN's ratings would be in the toilet without Donald Trump. Right. And Stelter said, I don't agree with that. <laughs> and, uh, and so they kind of had words. But here's the facts. I want you to think about this. There are 130 million voters in the U.S. 
Uh, 60 some million votes for one and 60 some million votes for the other almost every election now. CNN gets less than 1 million viewers. Wow. The fact is, if all the other stations, including Fox and, and, and others, uh, the talk radio hosts, and all, if they'd stop talking about CNN, CNN would die. <laughs> They're kept alive by the fact that they put these left wingers on there and right wingers talk about them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's, uh, because I don't like fake news, I thought I would uh, uh, correct this so that you can see. There's what it ought to look like. Um, that's a nice looking clip. That's what the, if there was truth in news, then that's what, uh, in Mary Lynn, that was a picture of Brian Stoddard replaced with a toilet. <clears throat> Very nice looking. <laughs> All right, one last thing here. How many of you got your emergency alert test today? Only one of my phones did it. Then that means you probably have an outdated phone. Yes. Amen. Or you're in the CIA. <laughs> Just kidding. What are the two? What are the two? That's it, which. Uh, um, I just I don't want to dispel a couple myths and move on, but Donald Trump isn't behind this, and there are a bunch of never Trumper and quacks and funny mentalist kooks out there trying to convince everybody that Donald Trump is getting us all online so we can all be rounded up and put in WalMarts, and that's not what's happening. This was uh, originated in 2006. It was actually uh, funded by uh, Congress and signed by Obama in 2012. But it's not a bad thing. And everything Obama does is not a bad thing. This is just a way to warn you if there's something like uh, electronic pulse uh, bombs going off or whatever to let you know, hit the deck or get your milk and toilet paper or whatever they need to tell you to do. It's not a big deal. But here's what I was thinking, and I put this on Facebook, so some of you already saw this, but want to be something if that emergency alert goes out right after the rapture? Probably will. I won't be here to get it. How about you? Anyone here want to volunteer to check our, all of our phones? If God lets me take it to heaven, sure. <laughs> if you're saved... You will not get the alert. Amen? Amen. We will be gone. Because we'll be listening to uh, more important alerts. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Yep. Instead of a message, email alert from Trump, we'll hear the trump of God. Amen? <laughs> All right, let's cover this 12, uh, beginning of verse 5. We're going to finish out the chapter, which will finish out the book of Daniel. Beginning of verse 5 and continuing through verse 13, I called this the uh, Hittichel End Time Prophecy Summit, and you'll see why as we close the book of Daniel with a meeting at the banks of the Hittichel, which is also known as the Tigris River. Daniel, Michael the Archangel, and two others meet at the river. Beginning in verse 5, read verses 5 and 6 with me. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So uh, the first thing I want to point out is that the man who is mentioned here, uh, clothed in linen is the same that we saw in chapter 10 verses 5 and 6 you can turn a couple of pages back and see that chapter 10 verse 5 says then I lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were girded with fine gold of Uphaz his body also was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in collared uh, collar to polished brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. There's debate as to exactly who that is, whether it's pre-incarnate Christ or an angel. And uh, we're not going to get back into that. You can go back and listen to our debate on that in our study in Daniel 10. But the other thing I want to mention is in uh, this text where it says, uh, or ask the question, uh, one asking uh the man clothed in linen says, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? 
Now, is there anybody in this room who hasn't wondered about that question? Uh, if you if there's anybody in this room who's never wondered when uh, what and never actually had that same question and maybe other words how long shall it be to the end of these wonders then you haven't been studying your bible because all you have to do is read the bible and you're thinking wow and the more you see things like what we already looked at in our current events update you're thinking jesus has to be coming soon Amen. <clears throat> it's a question every bible student asks and we have to pay attention to the context. Verse 7 continues. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now you look at that verse and you go back and follow our studies up to this point in Daniel, follow our 100 hours of Bible study in the book of Revelation, and you will see that that's a good summary. Amen. It matches Amen. the rest of the Bible. And it matches Revelation 12. Amen. When we studied Revelation 12. Now a time is one. Times is two. And in half a time. That equals what? Three and a half. Three and a half. Wow. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. We've been talking about it off and on. 1,260 days, 30-day months, by the way. So you take 1,260 divided by 30, and that's how you come up with uh, Revelation 12, 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Wait a minute, what's he say there? when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. What's happening there? Yeah. Amen. That's right. Israel scattering into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God. And I believe that is Petra. And if it's not checked out, we've got Noah Hutchings giving you a tour of Petra, and I highly recommend you watch that. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred three score days. That's 1,260 days. And I'm going to show you a full chart. This is part of the chart here. And you see on this chart to the far right in the purple is the millennial kingdom. And right before that is the return of Jesus. Amen. Because when Jesus returns, he sets up his thousand year kingdom, which is what the word millennial means. Well, this is the days of Daniel 12. And all of this takes place in Daniel's 70th week, which is seven years. But in Revelation 11.3 and what we just read in Revelation 12.6, it refers to this happening. Revelation 12 takes place at the beginning of the second half, <laughs> the three and a half years remaining, the 1260 days. Um, I, I, I don't want you to think for a second I'm making fun or, any, or be, being too light or anything, but uh, as a football fan, it just helps for me to think in terms of football. <laughs> and uh, you see the beginning, the rapture is not the beginning of the tribulation. The rapture is kind of the pregame show. If you go to a Buckeye game, the band comes out and they do a little pregame. And then they, and then they bring the, the, the team out and everybody stands up and cheers but no one scored yet or anything. The game hadn't actually started. That's kind of like the rapture. Instead of going out on the field, we go up in the air. Amen? You don't think there's going to be a whole lot of shouting? <laughs> there's going to be a whole lot of shouting. And so, like football, they have, the beginning of the pregame show isn't part of the game. The game starts whenever the Antichrist confirms the covenant for one week, seven years. That starts the game. Halftime. Halftime is the abomination. Yeah. See? Yeah. And so then you have three and a half years left. And at that time is when he goes against Israel and Israel flees into the wilderness. And that's what so far we got here on the chart. Can you save it or is it something? I was just mentioning on, on chapter, on the verse six here. No, no, verse seven. Because you said a moment ago that, the, that there's debate on whether or not that was Jesus or an angel. Oh, back, that's in back in chapter 10. Oh, back to 10. Well, and then, yeah, it'd be the same man here, yeah. But I mean, is it presumptuous to think that 
that it can't that it isn't Jesus because because it's it's talking about God in the third person. Well, there's three persons in the Godhead. Yeah. So there's times where Jesus is being talked about, and then there's a reference to God in the same sentence. So that doesn't necessarily mean it's not Jesus here either. That's why there's no dogmatic answer to it, even though some people try to make it dogmatic. Where it's not dogmatic, we are not dogmatic. Amen? Amen. So you take 1,260 days, and you divide it by 360 day years, and you come up with three and a half. See how that works? I know math's not easy, but did you get that? That's kind of basic. <laughs> Are you getting it? It's, just, it's important for you to get that because if you go from one text to another, it makes these, sets up these basic equations. Now, I want to say a word about date setting before we move on. This does not help sell books, date, uh, <laughs> setting dates for the rapture. This doesn't have anything to do with the rapture. And uh, the Seventh-day Adventist cult began when uh, William Miller, uh, no relation, um, tried to establish the date of the rapture using these dates in Daniel. It don't work. <laughs> so give it up. Um, a little reality check as we move on. The Revelation 12 takes place in the final three and a half years of the 70th week. I mentioned that. After halftime, the abomination. <laughs> and only then can anyone have a precise date for the second coming of Jesus. And like the Buckeye game last week, you know, it's going to look like uh, the, good, the, the, the good guy's going to lose. <laughs> and then right at the end... Yeah, how many of you saw that or know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay, yeah. I was going to say, I thought there's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that's a real good way for me to remember things and for you Buckeye fans. <laughs> and, uh, but it's not a bad question to ask of Lord. I want to pinpoint that. It's not a bad question. Um, but when you get the answer, don't reject the answer. What, when's the rapture going to happen? Soon, that's, a, that's the perfect answer because no one knows the day. No one knows. But, but it's, a, it's a good question to ask, but then you've got to be, able, be willing to accept the answer. Look we'll over to Acts chapter 1. I want to show you something. That's why I've had people uh, call me, write me, uh, email me, or again, the kingdom to Israel. See, at this point, they're not looking for the rapture because these are Jews under Mosaic law and they transition into gray, the gospel of grace and the church age has just begun. And so they're, they're, what's on their mind? Well, what's prom promised to them? They're Jews. They're promised the kingdom. They're promised the Messiah to sit on the throne. So they ask, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Verse 7, And he said unto them, What a stupid question. <laughs> no, I love this. He doesn't chew them out. Verse 7, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. See, they've got to be willing to accept that answer. Good question, but you're not going to ever know the answer till you, you know, experience it. Do what happens. But, verse 8, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all they beheld. He was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And that's the answer to your question about the rapture. It's not for you to know. And you just, if these people would stop trying to figure it out and understand they're not going to know the date of the rapture. But as we're seeing here, um, there is going to come a time when you can know. It's just not going to be before the rapture. <laughs> Daniel chapter 12, verses 8 and 9, back to our text, says, And I heard, but I understood not. How many of you admit you've been there? Amen. A little humility here. I've been there. People don't like it when I tell them there's some things I just don't get, some things I just, you know, give you the choices and let you go you know, pray about it. Then I then said, I oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? That sounds like the apostles. Verse 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. 
So a note to date setters. Give it up. <laughs> and Daniel wasn't told, and you're not going to figure it out either. Verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly. They're doing that, amen? Mm -hmm. Here's the key. Pay attention. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. We see this coming to pass in our very own day. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Wicked isn't just about non-Christians, but also about many professing Christians. Now, when I say professing Christians, as uh, you know, we joked about in Sunday school last week, I'm not talking about professors necessarily. <laughs> um, but if you are a professor in a religious or biblical sense, that means you profess to be a Christian. But some of the most wicked people alive today are professing Christians. Some of the most vociferous, some of the most zealous baby killers in America are clergy. Yeah. Amen. Some of the most supportive of Sodom call themselves reverend. And a lot of them are women. Mm -hmm. I call them the wickedly ignorant. Has a ring to it. <laughs> One example, apostate liberals. That's in all denominations, by the way. There are plenty of apostate liberal Baptists, apostate liberal Presbyterians, apostate liberal fill-in-the-blank. An apostate is someone who claims to be a Christian but uh, has fallen away from the faith. And they, if you ask them what they believe, they do not believe in an infallible Bible. Um, or they, they don't... It, it, they, some of these people will profess to even believe some of the things we believe. But you'll find they'll either attack the Bible or they won't preach the biblical gospel. They won't fully accept the deity of Jesus Christ. They have a salvation by works and so forth. Um, those people, when you talk to them about what's going on in the world today, they're clueless. The wicked will not understand. I was on the way home uh, the other day and turned on uh, public radio. And I, I was scanning, actually, the, the stations. <clears throat> I was looking for uh, the news. And I heard this guy, he's talking about Noah's Ark. So I stopped it and I listened to him for a few minutes. And he talked, at first he was talking about it like he believed what it was saying. You know, he told the story and everything. Turned out he doesn't believe a bit of it. And he was saying that uh, the Bible plagiarized the uh, Gilgamesh. Uh, story, and so on and so forth. By the time the, the guy gets done, then they're having more in-depth conversations, and he says, "What is what was the uh, most difficult thing for you when you read, did this study and found out all this information and realized that the Bible really isn't infallible and that it's actually uh, copying other religions and all that? And he said, well, the hardest thing is the realization that at some point, we cease to exist. It's just over. You're going to die. That's, I call it the three deaths. First you die physically. Then they have the ceremony and you basically die again right there in the funeral. And then the third death is when all the people who know you, all the people who had any recollection of you die and you're forgotten. If they're honest, that's what all non-Christians really believe. All non-Christians have to believe that that's just coming a day when we're going to no longer be in existence. No one's going to remember you. Nothing's left. That's what apostasy gets you. Also, the anti-Semitic, anti-dispensationalists. That's not really redundant. There are uh, exceptions. There, some anti-Semites are not uh, anti-dispensationalists, but... Um, very few dispensationalists hate the Jews. But uh, if you find somebody who is opposed to the 
nation of Israel and hates the Jews, and most of them are going to hate you being dispensational. And uh, that's some of the people who are totally, they're wicked. If you hate the Jews, you're wicked. Amen. And I'll guarantee you, you've got other sin. Because the Spirit of God is not ruling in your heart if you hate the Jews. Amen. And you're clueless. Amen. You have no idea what's going on in the world. Then you have these charismatic false prophets on TV, and their authority is not the Bible or Bible prophecy. It's their own word of prophecy. And I, they always have a, you know, I had a dream, and I had a vision, and all this. And it supersedes what the Bible says. And a lot of them, I call them prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S. But uh, a lot of them are uh, all, they, they used to be a lot of the Pentecostals were in agreement with us on the rapture and everything, but not anymore. You listen to these guys, they're going way off the deep end into this dominion theology and and they think that we're gonna we're gonna conquer the world. And every one of these guys, you listen to them. There's a revival sweeping the land. You know, and you're like, what planet you live on? I don't see a revival. And finally, uh, cults like the Adventists, the Watchtower, uh, LDS, is the Mormons. They they're clueless. Wicked, yes, they deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Wicked, yes, they're accursed according to Galatians. They preach false gospels. And they're, they're clueless. Just some examples there. And so we have the chart there, as I said, with the return of Jesus at the beginning of the millennium. And verse 11, read that with me. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Now, how many more days are there in 2000, or 1,290 compared to 1,260? 30. Which would be a month, right? Yes. So the Antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation three years and seven months before the return of Jesus. Now, it just makes sense to me that uh, th there would be about a month before things really kicked in after he committed the abomination. But you have, it says right there, from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be 1,290 days. So that's uh, three years and seven months instead of three years and six months. See that? Amen. So there it is. We got it kind of charted for you there. Now, from the time that he goes after Israel, obviously, if we're understanding this correctly, there's going to be a 30-day period between the abomination and the beginning of Revelation 12 where he goes after the Jews. Yep. 30 days. So verse 12, read that. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,305 and 30 days. That's 1,335. This would appear to point at 75 days after the return of Jesus. You see that? Now you could figure it up to 45 days after. It's according to where you put it. But I think this may be a hint at the coronation. Amen. You got the abomination happens 30 days later. Revelation 12 begins when the Antichrist goes after the Jews. 1,260 days later, Jesus returns. And then either 45 or 75 days later, Jesus is coronated king. Amen. Have you RSVP'd? Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I got my reservation. Oh, Lord. <laughs> There's your little chart there. As you can see, now I've got this moved over equal to the date of the beginning of the 1260, <coughs> carrying us over into the millennium by 75 days or 45 days. It's up to you. Um, you can either start it with the top one as I did or the middle one. I can't find any hard, you know, rule there. It's one or the other. As I said, I'm not going to be dogmatic where I cannot be dogmatic. But when I can be, I will be. And I love it. I love being dogmatic about the fact that Jesus is coming again. <laughs> 
I love being dogmatic about the fact that if you're saved, you and I are going to be at the coronation of Jesus. And we're going to be in that kingdom for a thousand years. Those are some things I'm dogmatic about. And Shih Tzus are great dogs. (laughs) Verse 13. Read that with me. But go thou thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Now this is directed toward Daniel and not us. Not specifically. Daniel's told, uh, go thou thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest. You may never die. You might. If the Lord tarries, of course we can drop dead any moment just like we could be raptured any moment. But some of you here today may never die. That's, they sold a lot of books and magazines using that phrase, but it's true. He says, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Daniel's lot remains to be seen, but it looks pretty good. Amen. It's not talking about a... Uh, in this context, he's not talking about a lot as far as land, but I think he's going to have a nice prime lot too. Amen. <laughs> Look over in this is the last place we're going to run Ezekiel. Ezekiel, back, just a few pages before where we're at. Ezekiel 14, Ezekiel and Daniel, back to back books. Ezekiel 14, 14. Ezekiel 14, 14. Now, I have to say, I'm impressed. You all stayed awake after all that chicken and all that good food. Man, I'm impressed. Verse 14. I love these two verses we're going to read. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. That could really be said to uh, anybody, but that's talking about Israel and apostasy. And God says, even if, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job lived there right now, I'd still kill all of you except those three. Wow. But, hey man, Daniel's looking pretty good, ain't he? <laughs> I'm just saying, that's a great... I mean, the whole nation's gone to hell and God says, but if Noah and Daniel and Job were there, they'd, they'd survive. I'd say Daniel's lot's looking pretty good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God. I mean, this is strong. They shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. In other words... Even if, if Job and, and Daniel and, and, and Noah, let's say Daniel was your neighbor at this time, he couldn't save you. He couldn't save you. His own righteousness would save him, like Lot in uh, Sodom. But even if you were best buds with these guys in Israel, and that's saying a lot about Daniel. The negative is Israel being an apostasy, but the positive is, look at Daniel. <laughs> Pretty good stuff, amen? Yeah. All right, real quick, a couple of questions. We're still actually getting done just a few minutes later than normal. Charlie? What, sorry, I didn't quite follow up. What do you think is referencing this lot? Do you think that's talking about standing before God? No, his lot meaning uh, in a sense of his reward. His reward. Which, like I said, in the context, isn't talking about his yard like a lot, but I, I think that's part of it. <laughs> you will have a nice lot. <laughs> uh. Do you think our mansions will have yards? You know, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure we won't have to cut grass or pull weeds. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it doesn't really specify the type of mansion, the type of situation, so... I can't say. Hey, man. I mean, yeah. Could be that, you know, um, well, here's the thing. If if what I believe is true, the New Jerusalem 
basically is like the moon. It will be above the earth, but it'll instead of going around the earth and everything, it'll be above Jerusalem, the old, the, the earthly Jerusalem. And we will be able to go up and down. So, you know, whether or not there's yards and everything up in New Jerusalem, I don't know. There's no indication. Well, it says there'll be yards. Huh? That one song says there'll be yards to play football in. Yeah. <laughs> That's. I can't. I know. I, the song, it's. My Father's House. Yeah. yeah. In my big father's yard. house. Where we can play it's a big, big house. Is that it? Yes. Where I can play football. Touchdown. But then I think they're only saying we're getting a compartment yeah. in that song. So yeah. it's like crazy. Johnny? I would say if you're able to fly, why would you necessarily need a yard? You could probably. See, but that's, whole... that's that word need. Heaven's yeah, not really all about needs. Right. So you kind of might have things we don't even really need. Don't need a mansion, you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't even need to fly. But hey, I'll throw it in there for free, the Lord says. I want to. We could fly. We could have pretty much the entire universe in the backyard. I hath not seen, ear heard, nor the mind of man imagined. And it's fun to imagine, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's probably enough, enough stuff to explore for the entire thousand years or more. And we will sing this blessing from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. All right, I'll try to start it without being too high. The Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee. And keep, thee. and keep thee, the Lord make his face shine upon thee, the Lord bless thee, the Lord bless thee. And, keep thee. and keep thee, the Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee, and be gracious unto thee. Pray. Father, we thank you for this good night, wonderful family gathering, and we just thank you for this book and your Holy Spirit who teaches us. Now, I just ask for safety as everyone heads home. Lord, give us a good weekend with plenty of opportunity to talk to others about Jesus or give out a gospel track to live our lives in a way that is pleasing in your sight. And if you return and rapture us out of here, may you find us all busy. Amen. And Lord, we just thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for Jesus. We pray in his precious name. Amen. 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 Um, just kind of to mention another prayer request. Mm -hmm. but just another prayer request. Um, I have a friend named Kelsey, and her dad was recently diagnosed with Um, and he's not doing too bad yet, but it's the, the, the kind of cancer that is probably going to be. Um, so, I don't know, Mr. Bowers. Let's put him on the list. Bauer?
It's raining chickens. <laughs> Arkansas. Might not last till then. Sorry. Bye guys.